Keynes described productive capacity as the total value of goods and services that can be produced by the economy when it works at full employment. When non-economists think about the concept of full employment, they tend to think exclusively in terms of the labor supply. Remember, however, that the economy has several different types of inputs available to it. In addition to labor, an economy has some endowment of capital stock, natural resources, and entrepreneurship. Thus, productive capacity means the total value of goods and services that could be produced by the economy if all of its labor, all of its capital, all of its natural resources, and all of its entrepreneurship were being utilized in the production of goods. Obviously, this is a theoretical construct. It is not literally possible for any economy to use all of its inputs. Some labor, some capital, some natural resources, and some entrepreneurship will remain idle at any given time. With the acknowledgement that aggregate demand and productive capacity are theoretical constructs, if you can imagine that the total amount of money available in the economy to be spent on goods and services is roughly equal to the total value of the goods and services that can be produced by the economy when it works at full employment, Keynes would describe this condition as general equilibrium. The condition aggregate demand equals productive capacity would hold. However, at any given time, the economy is not in general equilibrium. It may be that aggregate demand exceeds productive capacity, or that productive capacity exceeds aggregate demand. When aggregate demand is greater than productive capacity, we have inflationary pressure in the economy. In the mid to late 1980s, this was a huge problem for the American economy. I can still remember my high school economics teacher way back in 1978 defining inflation as too much money chasing too few goods and services. That's really a pretty good, simple definition of inflation. However, for many of the students in this class, inflation is a difficult problem to appreciate because it has not been a serious problem in their lifetimes. The practical problem with inflation for ordinary people is that it erodes their real incomes and therefore their quality of life. Inflation is indicated by increases in the general price level. Prices for everything go up. In the 1970s, people were receiving regular increases in their wages, but these increases were not keeping pace with the increases in the prices for consumer goods. Much of the increase in the price of consumer goods was being driven by the increases in energy prices resulting from the Arab oil embargo of 1974, the Iranian hostage crisis of 1979 to 1981, natural disasters, and other factors. The fact that wage increases were occurring more slowly than increases in the price for virtually everything else meant that real incomes declined during this period. The quality of life that families might have been able to achieve based on just one income in earlier periods now required two incomes. That is the devastating power of inflation. 